here. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite repugnant robot's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the fans' hobby. I don't even remember the name. It's Repugnus, right? Let me see. Monster Tooth, something like that. This is their Monster Bot Repugnus. I've always had a soft spot for the Monster Bots. I've wanted Masterpiece scale Monster Bots for some time. I'm not sure this is the one I'm going to be going with, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have another option, and we're going to get into that. But for right now, let's take a look at accessories, which are really just this gun that he's holding. As you can see, he holds it just fine. Operates on a make make toys like tab like a slot system however i will say it is looser so you know holding it up is fine holding it down is fine unless you give it a little tap but uh it's not going to just come you know sp spilling out of his hand or anything as for the gun itself it is a white plastic um two pieces screwed together nothing really to write home about just 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 fine 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 just fine before we get too much further into this review, I just want to remind everyone it's a skit-free Saturday, so uh, no skit for this video unless something really jumps out at me. Um, and we might have something for Sunday as well. We'll see. We'll see how it goes today. It's Friday today. So um, I should talk a little bit about how I got this guy before we take a look at him. Uh, this was sent to me by GCI Toys. Uh, shout out to them. Yeah, I, I don't think I shout out 215 for the uh, gears and swerve, but shout out to 215 toys as well if you guys are interested in picking those up. This was sent to me by GCI Toys though, and they actually, this is a copy that was sold to a customer. The customer knew um, that I had a relationship with GCI and also knew that I hadn't reviewed this guy. So they hit me up and asked if I would be interested in taking a look at him. I said, absolutely. And then they hit GCI up and said, look, just ship it to me and then I'll ship it to them, which is pretty cool uh, how that all worked out. So thanks to both of those individuals involved, uh, both the distributor and the consumer. Anyway, the head is on a ball peg. Uh, as a result, and because of all of this sort of business going on up here, it's a fairly limited range. However, there is black paint, blue paint, and yellow paint all on there, which I do like. And I like the, the head sculpt generally, with one exception, dim lips dough. What's up with that, Mac? It's just a bit intense, no? It looks like, like claymation lips that would be like on a claymation character, where you would like just animate the lips, you know, and keep that. It's just, it's just a bit intense, isn't it? Um... So yeah, range-wise though, you get up to there, down to there, which is pretty good. And down is important on a bot like this where you want them looking down on you. And um, and the swivel, you just have to manipulate around uh, all this sculpted work in order to get it. For the chest and, and abdomen area, we have a, a place for an Autobot symbol. That's cool. Um, I always like when they do stuff like that. You have all this tampo paint. They do have tampo paint all over the place, and I do like it. However, um, I would have much rather preferred a finish than any of these tampo designs. I, I think that a, a Masterpiece scale figure should have a, a large amount of finish to it, and I don't think that this does that uh, throughout. But there's tampo paint all over the place. 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 Excuse me. Place. Uh, let's see. It looks like they're Meg, oh, Megatooth. Maybe that's the name of this guy. Monster, Megatooth. And that one is actually misspelled. <laughs> like the one on the crotch is M E A G tooth. But like down here on the leg, it's M E G A tooth. So that's a bit of an error, isn't it? Wow. That's funny to me. Anyway, uh, it is. Sharp. They put their their company name on there. If you're into that, I'm not necessarily into that, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how I feel about it overall. I think the paint <clears throat> is nice, but I would have, like I said, I just can't say it enough. I would have much rather preferred a yellow finish. Maybe they could have got away with this gray plastic and then a red finish, and I think it would have brought it more to life. But that's just me. You may not feel the same, and that's okay. We can have difference in opinions. Um, let's move on. So it has a, an ab crunch which is really great. Uh, it's the second great ab crunch I've looked at recently. Um, the other one being in a review that's coming Monday. But yeah, nice, nice range. A little bit back too. So I like that, I dig that. Ratcheted waist swivel. There's no shortage of ratchets on this fella and we'll get there. Chrome teeth in the background showing up nicely uh, and the monster head in the background. Uh, we do have this extra bit, uh, but we'll look at the back here momentarily. Uh, we have shoulders that are universals, they get you up to there. 
ratcheted around. You get a little eight up here, but you can just manipulate the arm out a bit and come all the way around. Works fine. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbow. That gets you the full range there. And it's a decent enough sculpt, I think. Wrist swivel. We have some black paint details added. Uh, no, that's a different... Mm, no, it's black paint, sir. Nice. Wrist swivel, fingers are all on the same base pin knuckle with the exception of the index finger that's individually articulated with an additional hinge for a trigger finger. So that's all to the good. Um, the only uh, issue is you can't straighten out the fingers, so you always have to have either the relaxed hand or the fist. Uh, let's see if you can get how good a pointing finger looks. Uh, it doesn't really work. All right, same on the other side. We have universals for hips. They're also ratcheted. You get pretty much the full Van Damme and the full Monty. So that works nicely. They are heavy, so the ratchets do hold, but it doesn't take much for them to collapse. But they do hold. This is the space. I know you guys are funny about that. And a thigh swivel. Double jointed knee, getting you a great range on an otherwise bulky figure. I do definitely appreciate that. Then we have some black painted details down in the legs, as well as this uh, maroon type color added to the, the red there. The ankles are on a hinged ball peg. So you get an ankle tilt a little bit up, all the way back. A swivel, which is a new thing I'm looking at. And this, it, the, I think just because the swivels allow you, so like in a, in a human structure, which we kind of compare all these two, you have your, your tib-fib area down here, which allows you to turn your ankle a bit. Um, we usually substitute that with a thigh swivel or a ball peg here just to, to, um, to manipulate it. And that's fine too, but I think you can really get some exaggerated poses, you know, with that extra foot swivel. So that's, just, that's something new. I've been mentioning it recently, but it's something new I'm looking at, something I'd like to see more. So I like that. The rocker is there, but it's relatively limited. It's just to there. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, the heels, you can keep them up. I think that it's recommended that you keep them up, but you can solidify the figure for just planting those bad boys down and you're good to go with really no fuss, no muss. And the back of the figure, you know, I think it cleans up fairly well, but you know, there is a huge monster head on the back of this unit, you know, and there also is proportion wise, <clears throat> the waist, right? Like that's what sticks out to me about this guy uh, negatively just from Jump Street in, in addition to the lack of like finished paint. It's that hourglass frame. You know, like it's just, it's just a bit much for me. It may not be a bit much for you, uh, but for me, it's, it's a bit of an issue. Size comparison wise, there he is next to uh, Takara's Rodimus and Takara's Hot Rod, and that should give you a general idea. So head to head, he's actually a bit shorter than Rodimus, uh, even though, you know, with everything, it kind of, he has a more kind of imposing presence than Rodimus in terms of bulk and all that extra stuff on his back and so forth. You know, I think in the cartoon series, they were about the same size as the Headmasters, which are, you know, big. Uh, but in my, I think in my head, I've always kind of imagined them to be about the size of the Dinobots. So, you know, scale is in the eye of the beholder. We've had that conversation before. So if this feels right to you, uh, good. To me, it feels maybe a little bit on the small side, but it doesn't feel hateful. I, I will honestly say that. Size-wise, it doesn't feel hateful. I think the, the overall bulk of it makes it seem okay. And we can get him transformed. Um, I want to say also real quick that there is also a butterfly joint, a reverse butterfly joint here if you start the transformation. But for right now, we're just going to leave it tabbed in. It's not that much of a range anyway, but it's worth noting. So ball up the fist. We're going to do our favorite third-party transformation, which is tuck it in there. And then we're going to tab. We're going to bring the arm out to the side on the bicep swivel. And we're going to do our best to tab it in which there so same for the other side ball up the fist open up tuck the hand in bicep swivel to the side using the double jointed elbow tab it in there you can open this up and then extend these arms and tuck the head down all right, for the feet, these. These have a hard time while you manipulate the figure kind of staying in place. You wanna bring them up 
and you can lock them in. You'll hear it. I was talking over it. Let's see if I can't not talk over it this time. Just listen. Did you hear it? I don't know. Uh, and then take the feet and turn them 180 and bring the claws down if you haven't used them already. At this point, you can bring this up while bringing the arms in line. And then you want to tab here into here. And actually, before you do that, it might be best, let me see, if you open this little section up here and bring it down, and I believe there's a space for it to, maybe it just tabs in there, maybe that just sits loose, and then the flap on the head tabs in. And then you can bring these arms around on that butterfly joint we were just talking about and tab them in. And then the only last thing to do is to get these claws out. And I am going to try and do one. And then I'll do the other one off camera. It's not easy. And I just broke a nail doing it. Uh, there we go. There. So you do the same thing to the other side. I'll get it cleaned up, we'll take a look. So here he is. And, uh, you know, I think, well, okay, I think it actually works better in this mode. I mean, it's goofy, but it's kind of supposed to be goofy, right? I, I think it actually works better in this mode. Let's talk about articulation. The head is also on a ball joint. So you get a little bit of swivel, if you get the backpack out of the way, you can get, uh, you know, the full range. Let me uh, try to raise the camera a little bit while I'm talking to you um, and get it around to there. But then you have the backpack sitting out, you know, but not a, not a huge deal. Just kind of worth worth noting. The uh, jaw does open up to here. No pain on the teeth, no pain inside the mouth, no pain on the eyes, no pain on the head. Bummer. You do have this die cast piece here that's chromed out and they do articulate out a taste and then back in and you can close the jaw all the way. So that's nice. You had the waist swivel still. You don't get the uh, ab crunch forward anymore, but now you get it back, which is pretty cool. The arms are on universals again, but they are not ratcheted this time, which I think is fine. And then you get a bicep swivel for the monster arm and you get a hinge in and out for the wrist. And then these are die cast and they pinch all the way because you can fold them up into the arm cavity. So decent enough there as well. The leg articulation is exactly the same as robot mode. So we're not going to go through that, except you now get a toe um, hinge forward, uh, just just up, not down. Uh, I will show you a size comparison and, and then we'll kind of wrap up and do some some final thoughts. But it's not it's not a terrible attempt. There he is next to Masterpiece Grimlock, you know, and that's like way more threatening in monster mode, I think, you know, in comparison than uh, the robot mode is. But, you know, the, the things like that unfinished paint still stand out to me. Final thoughts wise, let's get through the negatives. Uh, I, I, the ankle rocker needs more more range. Uh, it's hard to pull off dynamic poses without that ankle rocker working for you and it's just it, it needs and deserves more range there's you know spelling mistakes in the paint i'm sh sh guessing that's individual results will vary but i'm not sure and maybe i'm wrong maybe it's supposed to say that but it doesn't seem as though it should one thing it really needs in order to kind of feel more like a masterpiece is big large chunks of plastic with finished paint on them such as the yellows the reds i think the whites would have probably been a bit over ambitious but I think had it had the reds, the you know the maroons and the and the and the yellows all with that finished paint, especially in in monster mode on the maroon, it would have given a much more masterpiece styled look. And then the other thing that we had to talk about is 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 likeness and where this fits in on your shelf because it it's kind of reminiscent of the G1 toy, but it doesn't much look like the cartoon image. You know, like in a way, I have more of an attachment to the G1 toy because I didn't you we didn't see much of them in the cartoon, especially if you grew up with Transformers. You know, you didn't really get to see a whole lot of them. Monster Boss until you got turned on to uh, the the Headmaster series. I don't even know if they were in season four at all. 
So, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough road to walk, you know, like, I get it, but I kind of feel like uh, there's certain things like the hourglass frame that really make it seem like not repugnous. Um, I think he's very broad in the shoulders, very broad in the hips, and, and maybe that could have all been slimmed down as well, and it would have made for a more kind of accurate looking representation, but it's not a bad looking one at all. You know what I mean? At all. It's just definitely a departure from the source material. You may feel one way or another about that, and both ways are fine. It may be more reminiscent of the IDW. I remember there was a brief segment where they were in IDW. There's some interesting stuff that goes on between them and the Dinobots in there and kind of how they view uh, teamwork and stuff, which is an interesting reading, some good character development if you're into that sort of thing. But as it stands, my biggest complaint with this is aesthetics, and that is a subjective complaint. The only objective complaints I have could have more paint, that ankle should move a little better. So let's talk positives. The articulation with the exception of that ankle works really well and all of the hardware to get that articulation is exceptional. Ratchets everywhere. If you like ratchets, like I do, you will love how this thing moves. The materials are good. We have die cast, we have plastic, and both feel good. Some places feel a little softer than what I think people like, but that soft plastic allows for some of those really large tabs to click in without causing any sort of issue. So ultimately, I'm okay with it. Materials are always a big deal for me in, in, in judging a figure from a company that, as far as we know, is new. It does have a strong presence. However, I do still feel like the, the waist throws it off a bit. It, it cleans up fairly well, except you do have that huge backpack on the back, and I do kind of like the monster mode. I think the monster mode is actually more effective than the robot mode, so if you wanted to display him in, in monster mode, I don't think there's much of an issue at all. So do I recommend it? This is one of those things where it comes down to, I recommend it if you like the way it looks. So usually stuff like this leads to people saying, well, are you going to buy it? And my answer is, maybe. This is a, so I love the Monster Bots. I really want, I've, I've been saying for years how much I want a set of masterpiece scaled Monster Bots. I'm not sure if another company will attempt them. They're not hugely popular characters. So in one way, it frightens me to kind of miss the boat. However, we haven't really had a miss the boat scenario with third party in quite some time. Maybe Sun Surge was the last one. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on it. I am, I'm going to kind of see what other companies end up doing, and I'm going to just, just keep, my, keep tabs on it from afar. If it starts to look like uh, it's dwindling in terms of stock, I might pick it up. If I'm at a con and I see it for cheap, I might pick it up. And if I see it in one of the, the Facebook groups like the Cybertron Cafe, Hardcore Collectors, Plastic, uh, what is it, Plastic uh, Fiends, you know, something like that, if I see it, in, in one of those groups for a cheap price, I might pick it up there. At this point though, I think I'm holding fast. However, oh, those lips, I don't like those lips at all. If you like the way this looks, I think you'll be happy with the way it's built. So in that sense, I definitely recommend it. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.